Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So, I wanted to give you this quick lesson in terms of knowing how to work the scene in street photography and showing you some of the behind the scenes behind some of my recent favorite photos. The contact sheets are essentially a sneak peek behind how I made the images. So, let me just show you the, the series of images first. Okay. So, this is a photo that I shot recently, and big ups to Cindy for helping me choose this image. So what I love about the photo is just kind of the sense of surrealism behind the photograph is you look at the dark figure on the right side and you're like, what the hell is, what the hell is that? And you know, maybe it's some sort of ghost or some sort of demon or ox head. And I think the cherry on top is a little kid running in the background. So in order to make this image, I shot 106 photos. <laughs> and you could kind of see through my contact sheets how I had to work the scene so much to kind of get that final image. And I think a lot of capturing the best photograph is, a lot of his luck is the more you shoot, the luckier you get. And the, the analogy I liken is, if you play baseball, the more you swing the bat, the more likely you are to hit a home run. So if you look at the first set of uh, contact sheets, I'm just following around an ox while we're doing uh, a workshop in Sapa. And I'm just, following the, the ox and I have no idea what I want. And I shot these photos all on a Ricoh GR2 camera. And the great thing about shooting with a point and shoot camera is that because it has the LCD screen, I could put the camera in very unusual and low angles. And so for the final shot, for shot number 87, I'm holding the camera somewhere very close to the ground, very, very low up. And when I was shooting it, I didn't necessarily see the kid running in the background, but I think in photography, the more you shoot, the more lucky you'll get. So another photograph I wanted to share you guys is, let's see, yeah, not these ones. Okay. Is this, uh, this image here? So I'm currently living in Hanoi with Cindy in, uh, and there's lots of really cool places to go. So whenever I'm with her, my strategy is to keep the camera around my wrist like a bracelet or like a watch because I'm the type of photographer that, you know, I'm a pretty lazy photographer and if the camera's in my bag, I'm not going to take it out and make images. So whenever possible, I try to use a wrist strap to always have the camera in my hand because I never know when a good photo is going to be around. So anyways, uh, you know, we go to the top of this Lotte Tower here in Hanoi. It's like 70 stories tall. It's pretty insane. In the top floor, there's these really nice leading lines. And so I see these nice leading lines. I said, oh, Cindy, do you mind standing here? And I take some photos. She said, yeah, sure. So I, I, I took a bunch of images. And while I'm shooting this photograph, I'm very intentionally looking at the, the background to make sure there's a little bit of white space around her head. And on the Ricoh GR2 camera, I have things set to high contrast black and white mode, which helps me pre-visualize the shot before I'm shooting it. And in terms of the settings, I'm just shooting everything in RAW. And when I import my photos into Lightroom, I apply one of my free Air Kim 1600 monochrome presets to apply a similar look to all the images. So if I wanted to show you guys the contact sheet behind this set of images, I took about nine images. And so the first shot, you can see this is the first shot, second shot, third shot. So you can see between the second and third shot, I'm kind of crouching in, I'm crying, crouching down. So I'm kind of eliminating this little bit of negative space above her head. And I asked her to stand sideways. I mean, this shot is pretty cool too. I really like the profile of her face. It's a little more mysterious. And then here, she's, Cindy's a very good model, so she knows how to pose for the camera. And she's, she's posing for me. This one's pretty good. And then Cindy goes, come on, let's go. And I think this was the cherry on top because uh, first of all, Cindy said she liked this photo the best, but I like it how you can kind of see her smiling, but also the hand gesture is what eggs me on. And it's slightly out of focus, but I still think it's uh, the most meaningful photograph to me. Another image that I shot here in Hanoi. So Cindy is currently studying her PhD in Vietnamese history here. And I just essentially follow her to her workspace, her archives every single day. And today she was wa uh, we're walking around, it's kind of a bit hot, and she's wearing this hat. And I was just thinking, hmm, maybe we can make some cool photos with this image. And so if you look at the contact sheet, essentially I worked this scene by photographing lots of different photographs of her from different situations. So if I show you guys the full set of images. So in the beginning, she's just kind of posing with the camera and she's wearing her sunglasses and I'm alternating between vertical and horizontal photos because I'm not sure which one is going to be the best. And you could also see I'm trying to shoot very, very low and work in the scene. I think I asked her to take off her glasses because I like her beautiful eyes. 
And it's kind of cool, you could see the netting above her, her eyes. So I think all these photos are without flash. So I'm working the scene, working the scene. And here's a photo you could see, this is without flash and this is with flash. And it's kind of interesting because when you shoot with a flash, so the technical settings, my, my Ricoh GR2 is P mode, I think ISO 1600, and I just use a fully automatic uh, flash setting. So you could still see some of the, these lines of the shadow, but her face is a little bit better lit up. So I'm shooting some with flash, without flash, because I'm not sure which one's going to be best. I'm working the scene. And I notice these nice leading lines in the background while I'm shooting. And so crouch down, working the scene, shooting horizontals, verticals. And here, I kind of realize this is probably going to be the best composition. So I'm shooting down, looking up, crouching down very low. And I'm asking her to look down at me, working the scene, taking a bunch of photos. I mean, this photo is pretty cool too. I like how surreal and scary it is. But I think I prefer, yeah, actually, yeah, second to last shot. This is the last shot. You can see that there's a little bit of overlap here with the black. I didn't notice this while I'm sh uh, shooting it, but you notice afterwards. So having a little bit of that negative space is critical. And so I asked her, or I think she might have done it, put that hair above her face. and just kind of makes it more mysterious. And I love the leading lines, the sense of mystery. So the, the takeaway point is often you don't know this composition until while you start shooting. Uh, another photograph I shot, this is actually a, uh, a photograph of Cindy's mom. So she's a very beautiful lady and she's wearing this nice hat and there's this nice streak of light. And essentially, if I show you guys the contact sheet, you could kind of see how many images I had to work the scene in order to get the background. Uh, one practical tip is you have, if you have your subject standing against uh, the window or you see a strong stream of light, Set your camera to minus one exposure compensation. Once again, I'm a big proponent of using P mode, aka program mode, which automatically chooses your shutter speed and aperture because it allows you to focus more uh, on composition and framing. So you could kind of see all the different variations I had to get of this image. And it's not somewhere until about the middle where about this shot here, which is the best shot. And I think what makes the shot strong is, this is a practical tip, is to have one of the eyes centered in directly in the center of the frame. And not only that, but having the full outline of the hat, it's, uh, it's very engaging and I like it. <laughs> uh, let's see, going through. Oh, <laughs> so one of my favorite new photos, uh, this is actually a photograph of my grandma. And you see a lot of photos on the internet that are just kind of very sad and depressing. And so I wanted to make a, a photograph that's a little more uplifting. So I saw my grandma and my philosophy is treat your loved ones like it's going to be your last day. So I, I visit her in her in her home and I'm saying hello. And you could kind of see all the photographs I had to shoot in order to get my final uh, image. I think I shot about 64 photos in total. So in the beginning, she's just uh, I'm just kind of in the living room with her. I'll show you guys the images. So I'm just kind of in the, the living room with her. And I'm just taking a lot of photos of her, working the scene, and making all these images. It's actually cute. I, I gave her a print of my other laughing lady, so I might do a project on laughing ladies. Anyways, I'm, I'm working the scene, shooting a bunch of photos of my grandma. But you know, she's like, "Oh, I look so ugly. Let me get kind of get get made up." And so she puts on her her nice outfit. And here, I actually asked her to start laughing. I said, "Oh, be like this lady. Start laughing." Ha 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 ha. And by me expressing my laughter, it was contagious. And just, so she started laughing too. So you can see all these photos I'm shooting, I'm just kind of working the scene. And one key thing I did was ask her to stand against a simple white background. And I'm shooting all these photos on the Ricoh GR2 with a flash, Macro Mel 28, that's me and my grandma. Uh, she's, a, she's pretty amazing. And so you can see, uh, I'm keep, I keep shooting photos, keep shooting photos. I'm not sure what horizontal, vertical is gonna work best. So I'm just making a bunch of different images. And I just got lucky that around here, I kind of liked the horizontal framing. And I thought this might be the best one. And the last shot of her just kind of squinting her eyes, I think this is my favorite. And so I think the, the moral of the story is, you, you never really know what your, your best shot is gonna be until you kind of keep continue uh, to work the scene. And I think there's also a big misconception in photography that you just take one or two photos and you get a good image. To me, you have to just keep working the scene, working the scene, and putting your soul into your photographs by you know, laughing, engaging with your subjects. And I think this is what makes your images more personal. And uh, let's see, it's another, oh, 
So this is another photo that I shot recently, which I quite like. Where is it? Oh yeah, there it is. So a lot of people know my laughing lady photograph in New York City. This is a laughing lady in Hanoi. Kind of an incredible story. She's been making the alzai, which is the traditional Vietnamese dress, and Cindy's mom went there to get uh, a custom uh, one made by her. And I, I, I think she's like 80 years old or late 70s, and she's still doing her work, and it's pretty incredible. And so we chatted with her, and I asked if I could make some photos. She said, yeah, sure. And once again, when I'm making these images, I'm telling her to intentionally laugh. And I worked the scene, took a bunch of images, and I just happened to have the same angle as my other laughing lady photo. So if I could show you guys the images, I'm taking a bunch of photos while making her laugh, trying to get her to laugh. And some of these are a little blurry and out of focus. And yep, I just, just got perfectly lucky with this image here. And kind of this fun little comparison that I could do uh, for you guys is, let's see, where is the image? <laughs> okay, there it is. Yeah, so kind of this diptych between two laughing ladies, one from New York City and one from Hanoi. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, that one's pretty good. And uh, the last contact sheet I'll show you guys is this photo I shot recently here uh, while I was in Sepa. And the, the tip is just try to shoot as head on as possible. And often, this is a photograph without permission. So this is the first shot, uh, shot. I get very close with the 28 millimeter lens shooting in uh, macro mode. I notice his hands against his face, which was uh, a good gesture. Then I get a little bit closer to the right and take another step to the right. And then he kind of glances over and looks at me. And to me, the cherry on top is the subject here. And if you can see in this photo, I, I cheated a bit. In the prior image, you can see how white it is. So in Lightroom, I use the, dot, uh, the darken or the, the burn tool to darken the right side of the frame. And so to just kind of give it this more moody, uh, dramatic imagery. And so for me, once again, what makes the image strong is the emotion, the, obviously the black and white, the fingers against the forehead, and the subject here in the background, which I could have never imagined. So the, the, the main takeaway points I want to give you through this lesson is number one, work the scene, take as many photos as humanly possible. I've taken 40, 50, 60, sometimes even 100 photographs to make one good image. And sometimes the best image is in the middle, sometimes in the end, sometimes the first shot, but for me, about 99% of my best photos are somewhere in the middle or the end. So the more you work the scene, the luckier you're gonna get. Uh, tip number two, don't forget to put your soul into the photos, which means interact with your subject is try to elicit, uh, elicit some sort of reaction from them. So in the case of my grandma telling her to laugh or the other laughing lady photo telling her to laugh, and the third thing is try to shoot head on. So you can see in this, uh, this series of images I shot of this man, this is too much from the side. I took a step right. And then I just waited for him to notice and he turned around and then I made this image. So hopefully these tips are useful to you guys. And uh, so until then, uh, keep rocking the streets and uh, peace out.